we had brought out a book to commemorate the 150th anniversary in 1998. I had the privilege to edit that book in which eminent Marxist scholars like Professor Irfan Habib, Professor Ejaz Ahmed, Professor Prabhat Patnai had contributed essays to the volume. In the course of the preparation of that volume, we also undertook a study to find out how the Communist Manifesto had been brought us to the discovery of how wide-ranging the impact of the Communist Manifesto was in our country in the course of our freedom struggle. For instance, I was not aware that uh, Dr. Abdul Kalam Azad had been one of the first translators of the Communist Manifesto into Urdu. I was also not aware that uh, E.V. Ramaswamy Naik, that was known as Pedia, was the first translator of the Communist Manifesto in Tamil. Apart from the fact that the early communist leaders like role in translating the text of the manifesto in the respective languages. So if you look at the history of the manifesto in India, you would find that uh, there is a whole range of personalities, not just communists, but also prominent nationalist leaders powerful message of the Communist Manifesto. Today when we are observing or marking the 160th in 1848 by Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels, I would like to dwell upon the significance of this manifesto when it was issued 160 years ago. The manifesto was the first exposition of the theory of historical materialism in a developed form. If you study the manifesto, you are struck by how Marx and Engels translated complex theory into powerful and simple language which can be understood by the ordinary worker. The manifesto was not so. the basic essentials of scientific, scientific socialism are spelled out with exceptional clarity. That is why if you look at the historical significance of the communist manifesto, it is put in the best way by Vladimir, Vladimir Ilyich L. Lenin who said, and I quote Lenin, with the clarity and brilliance of genius, this work outlines a new world conception, consistent materialism, which also embraces the realm of social life, dialectics as the most comprehensive and profound doctrine of development the theory of the class struggle and of the world historic revolutionary role of the proletariat, the creator of a new communist society, unquote. The enduring vitality of the manifesto is due to the power of scientific theory combined with the fundamentals of strategy for a revolutionary movement. Complex theory has been expressed in a lucid manner, making it intelligible to everyone. The manifesto remains 
the most powerful piece of writing produced by the communist movement. A few years after the writing of the manifesto and the powerful message of the manifesto being spread among the working people of Europe, we saw the historic Paris Commune of 1871, the first working class revolutionary attempt to overthrow the existing state power then. Though the Paris Commune did not last long, we can see the direct lineage of this commune to this message which was given out by the Communist Manifesto in 1848. And though the Paris Commune was crushed by the counter-revolutionaries, again, within the lifetime of a generation, within the span of 40 odd years, we found that once again, there was a successful attempt by the working class to establish a socialist state which came to fruition in Russia through the October Revolution in 1970. So, between the 1848 manifesto, which was the first, as I said, programmatic statement for a socialist revolution by Marx and Engels, we saw the further development of Marxist theory. If you read the manifesto today, we can see that it was setting out the outlines of the evolution of historical materialism, the role of the working class, the class struggle, and the establishment of a classless society. But the full we see that what was initially set out as a blueprint in the manifesto of the development of capitalism is taken forward by Lenin in his uh, seminal work on imperialism. That is, imperialism is the most advanced stage of capitalism, the state, stage of monopoly capital. And out of this monopoly capitalism comes the stage of imperialism in world capitalism. And Lenin pointed out that state monopoly capitalism represents the integration of bank capital and industrial capital and the accumulation and concentration of capital leads to the necessity for the export of capital and therefore imperialism. This was this second major leap in Marxist theory. From 1848, you see the continuation of the development of Marxist theory. The volumes of capital by Marx and then the extension of the stage of capitalism to a more advanced stage, which is in the post-Marx era in the late 19th century, about which Lenin so brilliantly analyzed and gave the guidelines for the international working class movement. Because along with imperialism, Lenin dealt with the question of colonialism. And along with the question of